Hello class, welcome to my career story. It is my pleasure to share a little bit about me. You'll hear my, my theme song. My theme song is that Send Me song that you're hearing. Um, so enjoy, I hope you enjoy what I'm saying about my life and my career. And I um, would love to hear some feedback and answer some questions from you. So, what I wanted to be when I grew up, when I was about seven, I wanted to be a taxi cab driver. Um, when we, when I was young, we didn't have cars all throughout our lives. Once in a while, we did, but we didn't have a car, so we, you know, drove in taxis a lot and and on the bus and stuff like that, mass transit. And I love what taxi drivers did, man. They allowed people to come into their into their office, sit down, talk to them. They were fun, it was funny, they got to drive, and they got to collect money. I thought that was so cool. Uh, I love to listen to people's stories. I love to, to be with people as they shared, and it just became who I am as a counselor. I think I still am that. As a young seven-year-old, um, that was kind of my, my calling. The Lord needs someone, send me. Grew up and changed and grew from the taxi cab driver. I wanted to be um, a, a manager of a hotel in Atlantic City. I wanted to be an economist. Um, I wanted to uh, be a businessman. I wanted to be a lot of things. But in the summer before my senior year as an undergrad at Eastern Connecticut State University, I discovered this program. It was called the CAP program, and it worked, C-A-P, CAP program, and it worked with first-generation low-income college students. And I was a first-generation low-income college student, and I loved working there. Um, and that was the turning point in terms of my career. I wanted to work with college students, particularly low-income first-generation college students. I wanted to be a counselor for them. I was so excited. The problem was, is I was a finance and economics major, so I couldn't change um, my major. So I just did what I could, um, and um, I became a counselor, a peer counselor. So, first generation college students, I was committed. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be assistant dean. I wanted to be dean of student, and I wanted to be the vice president of student services. I wanted to be in higher education the rest of my life. Um, I was convinced. I love working on college campuses. I love working with students, teaching and mentoring and counseling and just being there for students. That was my thing. So I was done. My career was set and I was working towards my career. My first step was I had to get more training. So I went to school full time at night and worked three quarter times in the day to become a counselor. So I got my master's in counseling. I was so excited. And then I got my dream job. I'm a Connecticut person, born and raised. Um, and my dream job was to work at the University of Connecticut. Um, I got a job at the University of Connecticut, so I was set. I was set for life. I was going to be at University of Connecticut forever. My dream job working with first generation college students at the University of Connecticut, the, the land grant, big university, I was done. My career, I was just going to continue to move up at um, University of Connecticut and be that dean of students that I wanted to be. Um, I was psyched. I'm committed to my faith and God kept talking to me. I had been born again at this time, never was a big church person growing up, but I was born again and God started, I started listening, not God started talking. I started listening to God and he kept, I was always confused and uneasy. I loved my job, I loved everything about it, but there was something about it that God kept talking to me about. And this Jabez prayer kept coming to me. I wasn't praying it, it was coming to me. And it's 
Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. God kept saying he wants to enlarge my territory. So, of course, what I did was got another job part-time because that's what I do. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to enlarge my territory by working, doing some counseling. I work with domestic violence. I work with people who are um, in drug courts. I work with heroin addicted um, addicts. I did all these things to in increase my territory. And the increase that God wanted from me. He wanted me to take a risk. And it was a ridiculous risk. He wanted me to go to Florida, do this job, working for Student Support Services, actually the McNair Scholars Program at the University of Florida. This was huge. I didn't know anybody in Florida. All my family's in Connecticut, never lived out of Connecticut. Then I had to take a $30,000 pay cut. And I went. And it wasn't a good experience. In fact, it was a terrible experience the first year. I got fired. I never got fired in my life. I was a good hard worker. I, I got fired and it was terrible. I left that job and was going to come back to Connecticut. But I ended up staying down there because God told me to. And then he made me a hall director, a job that I never wanted. And then he made me the dean of students assistant. Dean of students. So in two years, I had become the Dean of Students at the University of Florida. I wasn't at all qualified for that. Usual, God was right and I was wrong. And I stayed at University of Florida and did everything he wanted me to do. He made me the assistant dean of students, but this is not there's not spell problems in this slide. I made a lot of misreads. I didn't know how to read God. I misinterpreted what God was saying. I made a lot of missteps along the way. I had this fork in the road of going home. I want to run home and be back in Connecticut with my family and friends. Um, but then I met Miss Miles. And Miss Miles is my wife, who is now Miss Williams. And it's just interesting how God was orchestrating this. I got down, took a risk, and went to Florida. My wife, at the same time, was coming down to Florida the same year, the same fall that I came down. She came down. Now, I didn't meet her for another four years, but God was just orchestrating all of my vocational as well as my career, as well as my personal life. At the same time, all I had to do was obey. And I'm so glad that I did obey um, because it turned out to be a great decision for me um, vocationally as well as me um, um, personally. The Lord wants somebody sent me. Whole um, story in the Bible in Genesis 22 um, in terms of Isaac. <clears throat> um, and just obeying God when you don't understand it, when it doesn't make any sense, and just trusting God for what He wants to do. If I didn't trust God, if I didn't take this huge risk, then I wouldn't have gotten what God wanted me. Now, God will still provide, He does what He does, but I have to be in obedience to Him in that really is what I'm trying to do. I've said this to many people as I am I want to get it right the first time. I don't want God to continue to correct me. To Regent University. After I quit my job at the University of Florida and after one year of marriage to my wife I quit my job and I say, and God tells me to go to this PhD program. I get to the PhD program, I get this little stipend for about $12,000. I just got married, I have a one-year-old baby. My wife is like crazy, what are you doing? But she's a preacher's kid and she understands and I, and I kept her in the loop of everything that God wanted me to do. I graduated with my PhD going forward. And somehow God kept bringing me to Regent University. My friends, um, a person who was in my wedding, Dr. Jackson, she's 
here. I had a couple friends I met. They're here. God kept pointing me to Regent. My wife lives in Richmond, born and raised. And I promised her that I would come closer to her family because they were a little bit older. So it happened, and here I am. So through this process, I've learned a lot about myself and much more about God. I am so happy that God has blessed me. These are the important things on this picture. Um, God has kind of told me, first, you're a son of God. Second, you are um, a husband and a father. And third, you are in higher education and helping folks. I still love what I do, but God has a way of just molding and changing me. And when I listen to him, he was able to give me all that I want and then some. I wasn't expecting any of this stuff. In fact, I just, if I had it my way, I'd have been back in Connecticut. Um, but he, he kept breaking me and, and remaking me. And I love what he's done for me. You see my kids here. You see my wife here. What you don't see here is all the times when I didn't obey. All the times when he had to make me over and break me. Um, all those things. At this point in my life, I'm ready for him to stop making me and me re-breaking me. And just to be in abeyance. He's done for me and through me and just wait for him to tell me what to do next. My song is Send Me. If the Lord needs someone, send me. It's taken me a long time to get to send me because I don't like to be sent. I like to have control. But I find out when I get control, things go wrong. So I wait for God's next step, and in the process, I enjoy life as much as I can, and I enjoy His riches and His blessings. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.